Hello, my name is Matt Gracie, and I'm an engineer on the professional services team at Security Onion Solutions. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the Notifications tool, which can be used to forward the alerts generated by Security Onion to external systems like Slack, Teams, or email. Before we get started, I just want to mention that Notifications is part of the Security Onion Pro bundle of enterprise features, and requires a valid Pro license to use. For more information, check out the Security Onion Pro website at securityonion.com pro. Notifications leverages the power of a last alert to generate alerts for Sigma rules using any of the 40 plus alerting platforms that it supports. It can be easily configured to use different alert methods for different rule severities as well. So if you want to send your criticals to PagerDuty, your highs to Slack, and everything from medium up to service now, you can do that as well. And the whole thing can be easily configured through the Security Onion console web interface in a matter of minutes. Let's get started. As with most options in Security Onion, notification settings are controlled by the configuration interface here in SOC. Click on Administration and then Configuration to open it up. Now, as I mentioned, Notifications is leveraging a last alert on the back end. So the first set of options that we want to see are under the Elastalert branch here in Configuration. There are some options here for JIRA and SMTP, because those alerters require authentication to the service in order to be accepted. If you're sending email from an internal relay or a cloud service that requires a username and password, this is where you would put those for notifications to use. There are also some options here under Files Custom. If you're trying to send alerts via an API call to a service with an internally signed cert, this is where you would put the Certificate Authority cert so that Elastalert trusts it when making that outbound connection. There are also options at the bottom here for SMTP connection using a certificate and key, if that's necessary in your environment. The rest of the options that we need to configure notifications are under the SOC branch of this configuration tree. You see here that there are two entries, parameter and alerters, for severity levels 0 through 5. 0 is the default configuration. Anything that you put in here will be applied to all alerts, independent of their severity. 1 through 5 correspond to the severity levels informational through critical, and can all be configured independently. By default, each severity level that does not have its own settings will inherit from the level below. So if we set sev 0, and we don't set parameters or alerters for any other level, they will be universally applied. If we set specific parameters and alerters for a higher level, they will no longer inherit those SEV0 default settings and will need to duplicate them manually. We'll see that process in a moment. If the goal is to send all of our alerts to Slack, we can do that via these SEV0 configuration settings. Under SEV0 parameters, we would put our alerting details, in this case, the webhook for Slack. Now this is just a placeholder value that I'm using for this demo. In your environment, you would want to use a valid webhook URL generated for your particular Slack instance. Once that's in there, we hit the green check, and that adds it to our configuration. Then, under SEV0 alerters, we add the name of the alerter we want to use. Once again, hit the green check mark to make our configuration change. So with this configuration, Every Sigma alert that's generated by Security Onion will both appear on the alerts page in SOC and will also send a message to the Slack channel that corresponds with this webhook. If we want to get more fine-grained and send different alerts to different destinations based on their severity, we can do that. For example, imagine that your policy is to email the security analyst on call for any critical alerts and also to send all alerts to Slack. Then we can leave this SEV0 configuration in place which will be inherited by levels 1 through 4, and then add to the SEV5 configuration with the Slack and email info. Once again, these are just placeholder values for this demo. You'd want to replace these with valid SMTP and Slack configurations. Green check mark. And since we want both Slack and email for these criticals, That should do it. 
Now, anything up to severity 4, high, will generate a Slack message, but anything that's critical will generate both a Slack message and an email. To put these changes into action, a few synchronizations need to occur. If we just wait, they'll happen automatically over time, but we can force the changes to happen immediately if we want. First, click on Options and then Synchronize Grid here in the Configuration screen. That will kick off a salt high state on the back end, which will put these alerter and parameter changes that we've made into effect. Next, we need to open up Detections, click on Options, and then do a full sync of the Elastalert rules. What that will do is update all of the deployed Sigma rules to include this new alert configuration going forward. One last thing that I want to mention. You may remember earlier when I said that these notification changes are specifically for Sigma rules. That's all well and good, but what if I want to receive external alerts for my Suricata rule hits as well? The solution for that is simple. You just add a rule like this in Sigma that generates an alert every time there's a new Suricata alert in the logs. You can see here in the selection clause, this rule will fire every time something new appears in the dataset Suricata.alert. And this SO.notification tag will keep the redundant Sigma alert from showing up in the SOC alert screen. It will only send messages to the configured external alerters, like email or Slack. Once this rule is created and enabled, every Suricata alert will generate a high severity Sigma alert, as you can see at the bottom here. If you want to be more fine grained, you can have individual Sigma rules that trigger for different severities of Suricata alert. Check out our documentation and the documentation from the Sigma project for more details. So what does this actually look like in practice? As you can see here, I've got a couple of Suricata alerts for a DNS query to a .to domain. I've enabled Slack notifications on this test deployment, as well as that Sigma rule to generate alerts when there's a Suricata alert, so I should be seeing those in Slack as well. Here's the default alert as forwarded into Slack. As you can see, it's very verbose. It's essentially the full JSON block of the alert event posted to that Slack webhook in its entirety. Depending on your use case and the type of alert, this might be exactly what you want. If you're sending the alerts to a ticketing system or some other endpoint that's able to parse JSON into the appropriate fields, you may want all of it. That said, it can be a little overwhelming when these external alerts are going to something like Slack or email, where they're intended to be directly human readable. In that case, we can use some additional notifier parameters to pare down the alert to just the essentials. In this configuration, we're going to use just a few of the fields for the alert subject and the alert text. The subject will be the rule name and timestamp, while the alert text will be the source and destination information. We're using standard Python formatting here. As you can see, we specify a list of attributes to pull out of the JSON, and then use the position of the attribute in the list along with curly braces to specify where we substitute the value. This particular configuration example is from our documentation, if you'd like more details about it. And here you see we've replaced the alert text with just the essentials. This is much easier to read for your analysts, especially in an enterprise environment where you're getting multiple alerts every hour. For more information on customizing the alerts this way, either for a particular rule or severity level or across the board, please check our documentation as well as the docs from the Elastalert project. Or feel free to reach out to support and we can help. I hope you found this video useful and it helped you to understand how to configure external notifications in your Security Onion Pro environment. If you'd like more information on additional Pro features, visit the Security Onion Pro website at securityonion.com pro. If you have more questions about the specific features and capabilities I've talked about, there's information available in our documentation at securityonion.com docs. And finally, if you're interested in professional services and support for your deployment, you can reach us at securityonion.com support. Thanks for your time, and have a great day.